I thought it wasn't possible to juggle multiple streams of income because I was so used to working at one job and collecting one paycheck. But I can at least speak for myself and say that as a creative person, I need variety in my work. Hi creative friends, this is Kathy from Easy Sunday Club. On our YouTube channel, we make videos on practical business strategies, how to's and occasionally watercolor tutorial to help turn your creative daydream into reality. There are many videos on YouTube talking about different sources of income for artists, but I haven't really seen one that's like this. In this video, I'll talk about the 10 income stream for artists, designers, illustrators. I also share my perspective on the pros and cons of each. I've listed the timestamp for each of them, so feel free to hop around to whichever interests you or watch the whole thing, which will help with the YouTube algorithm. This is a two-part series. In the next video, I will talk about what skills I think you need to succeed or grow each one and what I would do if I were to start over with each source of income. I noticed some videos refer to the different products they sell as income streams, so I just wanna be clear on how I define them. An income stream is a distinct method of generating income with your creative work, so for me, e-commerce would be one way. It'll make more sense when I talk through them. This video is longer than usual, so I would suggest rewatching it a few times or taking notes as you go because I pack a lot of information in here. Let me know if this information is helpful and if there's anything you want me to dig deeper in future videos. And if you do enjoy this content, please support us by giving us a thumb up and subscribe. So the first stream of income should be familiar to you and that is commissions, which is a fancy way of saying you create custom art for customers like a pet portrait. The pro is if you enjoy working with individuals on a deeper level and enjoy translating your customer's vision to your style of art and medium, it can feel very rewarding. You also don't have to deal with inventory because each piece is one of a kind. So you don't need a lot of storage space because you're shipping them out as you make them. The con is, well, you only make money when you have commission work. The art you make only gets you paid once. So unless you have consistent way of getting customers, you can go through feast or famine stages. Also, if you do get consistent customers, you might feel burnt out from creating work for other people. I have a full video on commissions and why I stopped doing them. So you can watch them right here. I'm not saying everyone should stop doing commissions and you don't need to stop cold turkey either like I did but definitely have plans to build up another way of generating income as an artist because commission burnout is real. The second source of income is online sales or e-commerce. That includes any website or online marketplace that helps you reach customers and sell to them directly online. A lot of places get lumped into this category like Etsy, your own Shopify or Squarespace site, Amazon, and nowadays even Instagram and Pinterest with their own shoppable posts. The pro is it's inexpensive to start. Anyone can start an online shop on Etsy and platforms like Shopify and Squarespace nowadays have made it so much easier to create your own e-commerce website without knowing how to code. Marketplaces like Etsy and Amazon also helps drive traffic to your products because it's really hard to market when you're a brand new store. If your art can be made using one of these print-on-demand services, you essentially don't even need to invest in any inventory upfront, which is hugely beneficial when you don't know what will sell yet. But if you do decide to have inventory, like ordering prints from a printer or printing them yourself, this is also the most profitable way of selling because your profit margin is higher when you are selling directly to the customer. The downside is, well, it all sounds too easy, right? We hear successful stories from these seven-figure sellers all the time or business gurus talking about how their blueprint course can help you make $100,000 in the first six months. Well, if it's too good to be true, a lot of times it is. E-commerce is one of those channels that is the easiest to start, but hard to master. It's also one that I'm pretty passionate about and it's one that I'm constantly learning about and experimenting with. But if you love the idea of making money in your sleep and creating things that people love, then this mountain might be worth the climb. The third income stream also involves you selling directly to customers, but at in-person events like arts and craft fairs, farmer's market, 
conventions, and pop-up shops. This stream of income is actually very different from online sales because one, the strategy that you use to sell in person are quite different from online. And two, you don't make money while you sleep because you need to be there in person to connect with the customers, especially in the beginning. Sure, some maker businesses have scaled their operations so that they can have multiple booths over different locations and hire people to host those booths so that you don't have to physically be there. But most people watching this, if if you are in the first couple of years of your business, you're probably not at that level yet. One of my favorite things about selling in person is you get to have real conversation with people who come up to your booth. I've had countless meaningful conversations with customers at fairs that I wouldn't have from online sales. Also from a customer's experience, there's something powerful about talking face-to-face -face with the maker of the product that you are buying. There are two other advantages to selling in person. One is you can potentially make a lot of money in a weekend at one of the larger fairs or conventions, more than you could, especially with a new e-commerce store. Check out our video on our experience with fairs and how much profit we make from them right here. The second advantage is you can use in-person events as a way to test new designs and to do market research and to gather real-time feedback on how people react to your work. That's something that you can't replicate with online sales. The downside is events are tiring, especially if that's your sole source of income. They take up your entire weekend, if not more, including the time that you spend prepping for it. And it's especially hard if you have family and little ones to take care of, or you just need your weekends to unwind. There are also hard costs to being a vendor at these events, like buying the displays, booth fee, travel fee, as well as your own labor and time. Especially in the beginning, it can feel like a risk if you don't know you can make a profit, but I recommend that if you just focus on the advantages that I talked about, you won't judge the success of these events purely on how much money you've made. So on to the next one. The fourth income stream is wholesale. Selling your products to stores in bulk at a discounted rate so that these stores can go and resell them at a markup. The wholesale price is usually 50% of the product's retail price or what you would sell online. But in certain industries or if a company places a huge order, the wholesale price might be lower. But in return for the lower prices, you usually have a minimum. So the retailer will have to spend more with you in return to get that discount. This doesn't get talked about in the art industry and I'm not sure why. I know a lot of you are interested in it based on the survey I sent out. So I'll briefly cover it here. In 2019 pre-pandemic, which felt like a decade ago, wholesale made up 40% of my sales that year. My wholesale products include my art prints, greeting cards, baby blankets. The advantage of wholesale is orders are larger, so you can potentially sell 100 cards at a time to one store versus one by one to individual customers. Another advantage is by having a brick and mortar store carry your work, you get to reach new customers that you otherwise can't on your own. Lastly, it's just so cool to see your products in the store. I remember how giddy I felt when one of my favorite local stores agree to carry my art when I first started. As for the cons, it is harder to enter wholesale than setting up an Etsy shop and selling online. You're not likely to get attention of a retailer if you just have a small collection of greeting cards. However, it is possible if you look for local businesses that are willing to give you a chance and partner with you. Most of the online wholesale platforms like FAIR accept new brands through an application process, so they don't accept just anyone. And last I heard, they require that you have a minimum number of retailers already in order to be accepted. Also, in order to have a successful wholesale business, you have to make sure that your profit margin makes sense for wholesale. That's where a print-on-demand service automatically disqualifies because the cost of using these services is already high. If you try to cut the price by half in order to sell to retailers, it just won't make financial sense, at least in my opinion. This is the main reason we decided to make our own art prints because the profit margin on prints are very healthy, even when I sell to stores and wholesale. We can also scale up or down our printing based on time of the year, seasonality of business, or based on the volume of orders that are coming in. We're never stuck with too many prints that don't sell. 
Last words of encouragement, though. Wholesale is not as intimidating as it seems, but your profit margin has to make sense. The fifth income stream is licensing. It means you are giving a company the rights to use your design on their products that they can manufacture and sell. In return, you are usually paid either as a one-time fee or more commonly in the industry by loyalty, which is a percentage of sales. There's a perception that in order to license your art, you have to do repeat patterns that company can use on things like fabric, but that's not true. All of my licensed products are from my watercolor designs and I do exclusively painterly art and illustration style art that are not repeat style. I have an introductory video on licensing here where I share the process more in detail. I'll also add a link to the description below of all the other videos we made that I reference here. On the plus side, of all the income streams, I think licensing is the most passive in that once your images are handed over to the licensor, you don't have to lift a finger. I get a direct deposit every quarter for the sales that were made with a summary of what's been sold. And once a year or less, I'll check in if I have any new work to submit. That said, I am approaching this income stream in a more passive way, as in I'm not actively building my licensing portfolio, looking for new licensing partners and deals, finding agents, or try to upsell my current licensing partners with new work all the time. Because of that, my payout is just a tiny portion of my overall sales. But since it's passive, it's still better than nothing. The other downside to licensing is there is some gatekeeping. Some of the more successful licensing artists have gotten deals they have either through agents, personal connections, or because they already have a large following. I also think there's a ceiling to how much you can make with licensing. The more lucrative licensing opportunities are if you have a direct licensing deal with a large retailer like Target or Anthropology. but often these artists already have other ways of making money. So licensing usually don't make up a large portion of their total income. All right, we are halfway through. I hope I still have your attention. The next income stream is commercial client work or freelance work. This is different from commissions in that instead of working with individuals, you you create custom work for a business. The upside is commercial client work pays a lot more than commissions because businesses, especially large companies, have higher budget than individuals. In fact, from my experience, the higher budget the client has, the lower maintenance they are, and they will give you more creative freedom to express your talent because they are paying you to solve a problem for them. But I know, I know, not everyone can just land a freelance job with Nike tomorrow. If you produce good work, even with a smaller client, the work itself can be a marketing tool for you to receive more work. I'm a proponent of freelance work because sometimes it can be a nice break from having to come up with your own art to sell. And it takes the pressure off of having to always create something that sells. I know freelance is not for everyone and it might seem hard to find clients from scratch. That's why I'm also a proponent of having a day job while you're starting up an art business because you never want to make art from a place of desperation or need to survive or pay the bills. As for the downside of freelancing, well, the most obvious one is you're trading your time for money. Money, especially if you're billing the client hourly. Often, when someone has a successful freelance career, it could mean that it's taking up most of your time and more importantly, all of your creative energy that you don't even have time to work on any of these other income streams. It's similar to commissions in that you can get burnt out from creating work only for other people, but find yourself on the hamster wheel that you can't get off of. The seventh revenue stream is teaching, including in-person workshops and online classes. If you're a hand letterer, a watercolor artist, play the guitar, or have any skill that people want to learn, you can be paid to teach people your knowledge and skill. When you teach in person, it's a nice way to break up your routine and meet other people if you usually work alone from home all day. But if you're an introvert and love time with yourself, then maybe that's not a problem. If you teach at an in-person workshop, you may be paid a fixed fee to teach, let's say a two to four hour workshop or based on how many students enroll in the workshop. So based on tickets, sold. Often you'll have to pay the venue a commission or a fixed fee for lending you the space to teach. If you teach online, such as on Skillshare, they'll pay you a variable amount based on number of factors like how long people spend watching your class or other engagement factors. Alternatively, you can create your own course as a standalone online class. My friend Eric at Cafe Watercolor had an online watercolor course that he promotes through his YouTube channel. The pro is that it can become pretty passive once you've invested the time upfront to build an audience and produce good quality content that people are willing to pay for. 
The con is, well, basically all the pros. You're more likely to succeed if you have an audience to market to and you have to learn how to produce educational video content, be comfortable in front of the camera, etc. Also, simply put, not everyone wants to teach. All right, I'm gonna go over the next three income streams more quickly because they're not directly related to your main creative practice, but I still think they're relevant and helpful with building a, a portfolio of income streams and I still consider them creative work. So here are the three sources of income that I'm currently generating from our YouTube channel. I won't elaborate too much on them here because I don't think it's common for artists to pursue these right away. And those three income streams are YouTube ad revenue, affiliate revenue, and digital product. It took us a year of making content consistently before we start generating income from this channel and they still only make up a small portion of the total. But since Nam and I still enjoy the process, we're willing to invest the time in it. We're also aware that there's potential to make a lot more from this YouTube channel, but because we do have other streams of income, we're not in a rush to milk every job out of this YouTube cow. Sometimes it's healthier to say no to more money when it means we have the freedom to create the content that we enjoy creating. Beside these 10, I know there are other sources of income that I haven't mentioned like Patreon, but there's probably a handful of videos about that on YouTube from people with more direct experience than me, so I won't dive deeper here. I'm a huge advocate of having multiple streams of income as a creative. When I first started, having come from the corporate world, I didn't know anything about these income streams. I naively thought that you just pick one, go all in on growing that one, and eventually, hopefully, make full-time income from it. I thought it wasn't possible to juggle multiple streams of income because I was so used to working at one job and collecting one paycheck. But I can at least speak for myself and say that as a creative person, I need variety in my work. Variety is the spice of life. I enjoy learning about new things and experimenting with new ideas and discovering new ways to express ourselves and showcase our work. Once I learn about these income streams one by one, I realize they're very different from each other and requires different skills to succeed, which is why I will dedicate the next video on this topic. It does take time and effort to build each income stream up and none of them are truly passive. But just like the actual skill of juggling, you may want to start with one or two and slowly build your way up. Going after all of them at once is a recipe for frustration and burnout. So be patient and stay consistent. I only started with two or three different income streams and now I have uh, off the top of my head at least six. And the only reason we're able to have time to work on our YouTube channels because some of the other income streams have become lower maintenance, so I don't have to work full time on them anymore. All right, hope that was helpful. And remember, you don't have to have everything figured out. You just have to take the next step. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.